story. The choice of the 49ers who had the number one pick that year, who to pick? Alex Smith or a local kid made good Aaron Rodgers? Always fascinating to look at two quarterbacks that were taken in the same draft. Alex Smith came in as the number one pick in the draft and has had to carry around that burden, been in and out of the lineup. Aaron Rodgers, 24th pick of the draft, had to sit behind Brett Favre for a little bit, but he's playing at the top of his game right now and would love nothing more to make the 49er locals go, hey, maybe we should have taken him in the first pick. We're just about set for kickoff in Green Bay, and we're back after this from the Verizon Football Zone. Lambeau Field, the Packers and the Niners. You're watching the NFL on Fox. You know, Geico Just a beautiful day closing in on Thanksgiving weekend and the big holiday looking ahead to next week. 53 degrees, Coach Billick. Who would have believed? Well, I was with Mark Tarsher uh, coming down the elevator. I said, how about this weather in Green Bay? He says, yeah, this is Green Bay's version of global warming. <laughs> the great Michael Singletary. Hall of Fame linebacker for the Chicago Bears over his 12 year career, 10 time Pro Bowler. Took over midway through last season and is 9 and 9 as head coach of the 49ers. Mike McCarthy, his fourth year as head coach with Green Bay, took him to the NFC Championship game two years ago. They failed to reach the playoffs last year. Green Bay has won the toss, selected to receive. So Jordy Nelson just back from injury he returned in the Dallas game had been out with an injured knee. Nelson will handle it from the three yard line and brings it back out to the 27. That's where Aaron Rodgers who grew up a 49ers fan in Chico California played collegiately at Cal his final two years and as we mentioned the number one draft pick at the end of the first round by the Green Bay Packers in 2005 he's thrown 17 touchdowns against just five interceptions he's on pace for a huge year 30 plus touchdowns but they've got to protect him as we said in the open short drop and a throw to the near side and the catch is made by Donald Driver out to the 29 yard line. That'll be a gain of close to four. The rest of the lineups. Offensively we begin with Green Bay Ryan Grant on pace for another 1200 yard rushing season. Donald Lee officially the starter at tight end but keep an eye on your Michael Finley back for the first time in a month. And that offensive line has been in disarray the entire year. They've given up 41 sacks. Ryan Grant out to the 32 yard line. It'll bring up a third down for Green Bay. Defensively for the 49ers, they've been very good against the run. Thanks in large part to a man you once coached, Abrea Franklin, the nose tackle. Matt Wilhelm replaces the injured Takeo Spikes at linebacker. And in the secondary, still no Nate Clements. Terrell Brown again the start. Third down and three. Rodgers pump fakes, nearly lost the football. Rolls, throws, and there's Jermichael Finley. Across midfield to the 47. When Finley went down with an injured knee against Cleveland at the end of October, he was their third leading receiver. They welcome him back today. Well, and Finley is just working across the field. Aaron Rodgers has to flush out of the pocket, keep yourself alive. This is a really big athletic receiver. You could see the smile on both Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers' face as they talked about getting Jermichael Finley back in the lineup. Of course, Finley had the monster game, the first game against Minnesota this season, when he had six catches for 128 yards. After the gain of 20, they pitch it to Grant. And he weaves in and out and finds a pickup of 10 down to the 49er 36 yard line. Well the Packers as we said they're they're kind of a hard team to figure out here we see they open with a nice pass now just a little pitch iso this is get a little depth and now just get downhill Ryan Grant good solid running back for them. 
positive yards all the time. That's the thing you like about Ryan Grant. You're always getting positive yards. to Grant again and again. Big yardage inside the 20, spins down at the 12. Got a big block from his fullback, Quinn Johnson. Just good power running game here by the Packers. Again, just going off the weak side here. Fullback's going to lead up for him. Nice job again, getting downhill, one cut and go. You know, Greg Minuski yesterday when we talked to San Francisco, said that uh, you know they were comfortable with stopping the run with their seven man box. He may have to rethink that a little bit and start to bring that safety down because they're gashing pretty good right now. 26 yard gain by Grant then the nice pickup again by Grant. First down at the 11 Grant one more time and he's inside the 10 down to the eight. Packers have jumped on the opposition early and often this season 61 first quarter points and that's what gives you the latitude to have that balance that they have Tom if you don't get behind the, the pitch count so to speak can play even up or ahead now uh, Mike McCarthy can choose as he wants how much run pass he wants to go into any series with seventh play of this opening drive for Green Bay. Jackson his first carry picks up a couple of yards down to the five it'll bring up third down and four for the Packers. I think Green Bay is sending a little message here to Tom with regard San Francisco is the third ranked rushing defense in the league and it's their way of saying you know what you come up here we're willing to go toe to toe with you in this physical style of play. Third and four. Protection now Rodgers rolling looking throws into traffic and it's batted away. Mark Roman able to step in front of the intended receiver Jermichael Finley and out comes the field goal unit. On Friday in practice we saw Aaron Rodgers work this in terms of forcibly moving outside of the pocket. Nice job just getting a little bit of a tip thought he had an angle into Jermichael Finley. Good play by the 49ers after a great drive by Green Bay to hold them to three points. 23 yard field goal try is good by Mason Crosby. So the 49ers for the first time all year long allow a point on the opponent's opening drive. Three nothing Green Bay. Spanning 69 yards 46 of those on the ground. Arnaz battle. We'll take a knee. Alex Smith and the Niners get it when we return. It's been quite a journey for 25 year old Alex Smith. Well, it's hard to believe you just say 25 years old. The number one overall pick in 2005 seemingly has been around for a decade. But is now making his fourth consecutive start since replacing Sean Hill. And he'll throw on first down. Nowhere near the intended receiver out of the backfield, Frank Gore. The rest of the 49ers offense. Frank Gore, the NFL's fourth leading rusher over the last three and a half seasons. Michael Crabtree and Josh Morgan now in the lineup at wide receiver. Isaac Bruce no longer the starter. Well, on left tackle, they're without Joe Staley, so Barry Sims has to step in. That's going to be a challenge for them. Joe Staley, one of the emerging left tackles in this league. Little delay to Gore and a big hole up the middle. Across the 40. 
And run out of bounds at the Green Bay 37-yard line by Nick Collins. Healthy again is Frank Gore, and he's picking up big yardage right from the start. Tom, how many times have we seen this? They run a little bit of a delay draw. They get the lineman upfield. They had the safety down in the box, but he's too far to the outside to do any good. How many times do we see Frank Gore starting a game like this? We said they needed to be more explosive. They'll take it in the running game if that's what it has to be. A 42-yard run by Gore. Who, of course, in week two ran for 207 yards against Seattle, then got hurt the following week. And out of the Wildcat formation, it will be Gore on the direct snap, and he only picks up a couple of yards. Take a look at Green Bay defensively, the fourth ranked defensive unit playing out of the 3 4 under Dom Capers, and up front, they've been very good. The big playmaker this season, the rookie out of USC, Clay Matthews. He's been a real joy for them to have in the lineup, really making this one of the solid linebacker cores in the National Football League with Kentman on the other side, Matthews coming from the outside as well. Moran Norris in motion on a second and nine on the end around. They give it to Josh Morgan, still on his feet, inside the 30, tackled at the 29-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. And we talked about, you know, Morgan has been the starter all year long, along with Isaac Bruce. When Crabtree came back or rejoined the team, signed with the team after being a number one draft pick and not signing until October, Isaac Bruce was out with an injury, so technically he was still the starter until this week, and Mike Singletary says it's Morgan and Crabtree. Well, they liked what they saw in Josh Morgan right from the get-go last year. Early last year, he had some ailments. He got sick. He had some injuries. He has got such a big upside. They're excited about the potential of this young man, and they know they've got to give him the lineup to let him develop that potential. About an inch shy of the first down. You know it's hard to place the ball that close to a first down Tom. You're not I, lying. I was used to get, you know you could you couldn't miss that by an inch the other way. That's hard to do. All right, now let me ask you here you have the football at the opponent's 28 yard line. You've got third literally and an inch. Would you think about maybe stepping out of the box here and knowing that you'd probably go on fourth. You know what yes and take a shot here take a vertical shot because if I believe in my line in my running game and we set it the open right play good defense and run the ball the 49ers have belief in that you can go for it on fourth down great place for a vertical shot here. Well they bring in an extra offensive lineman and go out of the eye formation. Morris didn't need much. Crowd reacting as though he was shy of the first down, and we will wait. And you see this all the time. Just a quick dive to the fullback right there. What you can't see here is the, the R running back flaring out to the left. We may see later on, Tom, in the same down and distance, that little fake to the fullback and the pitch to the running back. But when you got one an inch, why not take the, the most direct path possible, give it to the fullback, let him get that one inch? Mike's not sure about this spot right now. We'll have to see. Exactly what they're coming up with. Now remember those chains have got to come from the far side of the field. I got to believe the guy got an inch. It looked like you know it doesn't take much good push by the offensive line. Our yellow line again unofficial. Boy based on that they may have pushed him back. Wow. Be shocked if, if San Francisco doesn't go for it here. Nice job piercing inside. Great job penetrating inside. Couldn't quite see who it was on the inside. Ryan Pickett just blew up the guard. Gave no chance for the fullback to go forward. Well surprisingly the 49ers are going to kick a field goal rather than go fourth and less than a yard. Yeah, surprises me a little bit on the road, having faith in your running game. So via 46 yard try to the left footed Joe Nedney. 
Well he's been so good for so long. Right down the middle for Nedney so each team comes away with three on its opening possession. By Domino's new mix and match deal. And by Kayak. Search one and done. Sixth place, 51 yards. 42 of those on the ground by Frank Gore. Take a look at this fella. That's somebody's son. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I got to tell you, that's the first time I've ever seen that kind of tribute to a kicker. That, that's that's impressive. That was on the field before game time when Nedney was warming up. That fella had a field pass, no less. Jordy Nelson out of the end zone. Still on his feet and dropped at the 21. So it was 7.32 to play. In the opening quarter, it's a 3-3 affair. Mike McCartney on the right and Greg Minuski on the left, the defensive coordinator for the 49ers, together with the 49ers at one point, probing each other with their calls. You can see McCartney checking his play sheet. Both these guys very much out of the mentality of openers in their initial calls. 3-3 game. And Aaron Rodgers to throw on first down, and there's his tight end, Jermichael Finley. Close to a first down, out to the 33-yard line. Yeah, the openers, you always hear about the openers offensively. Everybody knows about the West Coast 49er Bill Walsh openers. But defensively, Greg Minuski does the same thing. He has the first 15 calls on his sheet, probing each other with his buddy Mike McCartney, see what they're doing formationally. Then we'll see. That's when the real game planning begins, the chess match after they get through the openers. Second down, less than a yard. And that'll be a loss on the handoff to Ryan Grant. Let's check in downstairs and say hello for the first time today to Chris Myers. Hey, Tom and Brian, for Aaron Rodgers, this game personally probably has more meaning than any Brett Favre matchup. He was telling me before the game, he still doesn't get a straight answer from Mike McCarthy, the offensive coordinator in San Francisco then when he was passed over, now his head coach. Athleticism was the question. McCarthy has since said he's over that. But for a guy like Rodgers, he did start in San Francisco in a preseason game. He said today he has a score to settle against the team that passed on him and to further show his coach who's number one. Chris, thank you so much. Very interesting. Rodgers on third down to throw. And the catch is made for a first down at the 43-yard line by Greg Jennings. You know, this, this throw, as simple as it is, you're just going to see a little comeback route on the outside here. They're doing this off the left hash. Only a handful of quarterbacks really have the arm to deliver that kind of ball. Nice delivery. And it's got to be at the out the risk of the corner jumping underneath it. Very Across the middle, and the catch is made by Ryan Grant out of the backfield. Dropped at the 47-yard line, so another very good pickup on first down for Green Bay. This ball comes out a little bit hot. Again, we're seeing Aaron Rodgers move around the pocket. That, that, that's a tough catch for a running back. All of a sudden, he sees it over the top of a lineman, comes flying out. That was a nice reception by Ryan Grant. Two tight ends check in. Grant runs away from one tackle and manages to pick up a yard. Third down upcoming. Let's check in back in Los Angeles. Game break time with Kurt Menefee. Well, this may look a little familiar to Packer fans. This is Tampa Bay against New Orleans. Josh Freeman, some nifty moves, and then finds Michael Clayton in the back of the end zone for the first score of the game against the Saints. Tampa Bay on top, 7-0. Tom, Brian, and Chris. Kurt, thank you very much. Of course, uh, don't remind Packer fans about that Tampa Bay game two weeks ago. Yeah, that was the head scratcher, how a team like Tampa and the way they're playing were able to come up and beat these Packers. Third down, Rodgers looking for the big one. Jennings inside the 15. 
great touch to the receiver down the rail on the outside. Now there's a safety going to come over the top. So you've got to be very careful with this throw. Keep it wide. Let the receiver go to it yet still keep it in bounds. Outstanding touch by Aaron Rodgers. That's the kind of explosive play that you get out of this Green Bay offense. It's a 37 yard gain on the completion of Jennings and Rodgers an excellent start. Only one miss and that was in the end zone on the third down try their opening drive play blown dead before it ever got started the wave game offense five yard penalty first down that is the first delay of game penalty this season for Green Bay hard to believe when you consider they are the most penalized team in the National Football League and that's a unique situation because you get a big play down the field you got to get all those big linemen down into a huddle get the play call out very very quickly it's not as unusual as you might think even with the team that's as well orchestrated as the Green Bay Packers first and 10 turns into first and 15. Rodgers throws it too high for Grant under heavy pressure from Kent Juan Ballmer. Well anytime you throw a screen the very idea of it is to let the defensive line penetrate through but they were running a little stunt and Kent Juan Ballmer all of a sudden came shooting out of a canyon. I don't think Aaron Rodgers was quite ready for that much heat on what should have been a very simply executed screen pass. And again we mentioned that the Packers have allowed 41 sacks this season most in the NFL. In fact it's nine more than the next closest team. Green to Grant. Inside the 10, down to the 9 yard line. So they get a big chunk of it back. It brings up third down. How in the world did Grant catch that ball? And how in the world did Rodgers find him? Yeah, this is just a mass of green. He's hoping as he throws this that all that green jersey grants there someplace because all he saw was a bunch of green and a bunch of numbers. Nice job by Grant now weaving his way through the blocks of the offensive lineman and bringing them back into a much more convertible third down. Just inside the five for a first down. Rodgers incomplete. He had an eye on Brandon Jackson. So another drive stalls in the red zone for the Green Bay Packers. Another nice job on third down with the 49ers keeping everything in front of them. They opted for coverage. Aaron Rodgers has no place to go trying to make something happen and this Green Bay offense now they're ninth in the league in third down conversions down in the red zone is, there's nothing more critical than a third down conversion down there and they failed twice now. Twenty seven yard field goal try is good by Mason Crosby. The Packers have had it twice two field goals the Niners had it once a field goal. Aaron Rodgers five of seven on the 68 yard scoring drive a field goal so early on San Francisco able to stop Green Bay inside the red zone. Yeah and that that will pay dividends for San Francisco allows them to keep the game close. We talked about them needing to be explosive. We saw a little at least them trying to in this initial drive of the 49ers. Our Nas battle will run it out from his own end zone and he is slammed. To the turf at the 15 by Brandon Underwood. I'd like to remind you, of course, about the NFL on Fox Thanksgiving Day. So much to be thankful for. It'll be the Packers and the Lions from the Motor City. The day begins with the built for tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. That is 11:30 a.m. Eastern, 10:30 Central, 8:30 a.m. For those of you out west. This is where I'd like to see the 49ers if they're going to take some of these vertical shots we keep talking about. Backed up a little bit on first down. Love to see one right here.
They're going to run it. Gore picks up a couple of yards, maybe three up to the 19-yard line. Stopped there by A.J. Hawk. This Green Bay Packer defense with Dom Capers. Oh, got, a, got a man down. That's Michael Robinson. Michael Robinson, the injured 49ers player. Yeah, the, the 49ers, again, uh, a physical style of running game. And they're built for this, of course, but this is the kind of style of play they count on their players to be physical like this. We'll see. Hopefully, it'll be okay when we come back. Still taking a look at Michael Robinson, who was the lead blocker for Frank Gore a moment ago. Well, this is just good physical football. Nick Barnett coming up, meeting the lead blocker in the hole. Michael Robinson at fullback here and just catches him full on the head. This is just good physical football. Obviously, Mike Singletary concerned about his player. That type of helmet to shoulder pad, that kind of collision that you see every day between a fullback and an inside linebacker just underscores the physicality of this game. Nick Barnett nursing a, a, a thumb injury. We saw out of practice. So very physical game. Hopefully Mr. Robinson's going to get up and, and show that he's okay here. Of course that's a uh, quite a change as you know coach Brian Billick uh, for Michael Robinson. Remember he played quarterback at Penn State and has obviously had to adapt his game and become a more versatile player since entering the NFL four seasons ago. And just a good athlete, but it shows you there there is something to technique and learning a new position. I don't know they had to do a lot of that lead blocking at Penn State. Well, that's a good sign. He's up on his feet and able to walk off. Let's check in again with Kurt Menethee from Los Angeles. Well, last we checked in on this game, the Bucks had scored to take a lead. New Orleans takes the ball. Very next possession. They march down the field is what they do. Drew Brees to Robert Meacham. It's all tied at seven in the first. Tom and Brian. Kurt, thank you. Of course, Brian, we've seen the New Orleans Saints a couple of times this season. One of two remaining unbeatens in the NFL after that thrilling win by Indianapolis. Controversial win, I guess, to some extent with the decision by Bill Belichick of New England to go on fourth down and then Peyton Manning winning it on the final drive. Yeah, and it's been interesting to hear the dialogue about the decision to go for it. A guy with the three, three Super Bowls, hard to argue with any choice he makes. A second down and seven for the 49ers. They fake it one way, Will Smith the other way. Really about a four yard pass attempt there to Josh Morgan, who had Charles Woodson all over. And this moving Alex Smith around in just a simple boot action like this. Remember Alex Smith coming out of Utah? Very much an athlete. That was his strength. Very intelligent quarterback. Very athletic. Very comfortable moving around from side to side. Something I'm sure the 49ers are trying to build on. Uh, here again, third down conversions. Not a real strength for the 49ers. And if you're going to run the ball and play physical defense, you've got to manage these convertible third downs. Goes Smith in the arms of Aaron Campman. This is the proverbial coverage sack because it's just a four man rush. Campman coming from the top. Did not play last week in the win against uh, Dallas. Great to have him back. In the back end, you can see here this experienced, smart Green Bay secondary. They've got everything smothered. Safety's high, linebackers and nickel uh, DBs underneath. Alex Smith had no place to go, giving time for that four man rush and, and Catman to come back in. He missed the Green Bay game, and to have him back, a healthier uh, A.J. Hawk, this is a healthy defense on the part of the Green Bay Packers. Got another 49er down. David Boss there starting left guard. He has started every single game this season. I think he was in the middle of that pile after the sack of Alex Smith. On that left side, you already have Joe Staley down. David Boss is out for a little bit now. That's going to leave that left side just a little bit vulnerable. Thank you. 
This is something for a team uh, that for that prides itself on defense running the ball this this can't be part of the equation it's about time of possession it's about keeping the opposing offense off the field and when you have the number of three and outs that San Francisco has I know the mentality that they want but I don't know that that's a part of the equation that they were counting on and that's going to have to be better moving down in the playoffs if they can make a playoff run here. Well, while they took a look at boss let's bring you up to speed we've already talked about some of the inactives today as far as key personnel you know about Nate Clements he's been out with a while with that shoulder injury to Keo spikes not in the lineup or on the active roster today nor is Mr. Staley the big left tackle let's check in downstairs with Chris Myers. And as David Boss being helped off the field, Tom, the official word on Michael Robinson, a right shoulder injury. The team doctor trainer were checking for movement in his hand and arm. He is unlikely to get back in from the fullback spot, so Moran Norris likely to help out there. But Robinson officially questionable, according to the 49er medical staff. Chris, thank you very much. So Boss slowly on his way to the 49ers sideline. Well, the play of the offensive line has been something the 49ers have been working on, have been concerned about, and injuries are, you know, no small part because of it. And he laid a punt, just did get it away. Tremont Williams from the 33. There is a flag down. And will this be roughing against the Green Bay defense? Of course, it was a fourth and nine. Difference between running into the kicker, roughing the kicker. One a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. The other is just a five-yard penalty. And that's what he may be discussing. Running into the kicker, defense, number 33. Penalty is declined. First down. And just as you isolated, Tom, the difference between roughing the kicker and running into it, just really kind of they, they don't want this he just kind of slides into it you come down on the guy Mike Singletary happy with the return the way they covered the kick so chose to decline the penalty rather than thinking that they were going to get the punt off again and gain some yards it's Brandon Underwood the rookie out of Cincinnati a backup cornerback so for the third time today Aaron Rodgers and the Packers get the football. Each of their first two possessions culminating in a field goal. Little delay to Ryan Grant. And he's up to the 47 yard line. You may remember Grant last season really came on strong over the final seven weeks. And that's how many games all teams around the NFL have left starting with this weekend. He had three 100 yard rushing games over those final seven last year. And it was a great find for the Green Bay Packers because that was kind of a question. You knew they had talent on the outside with Jennings and Driver. Uh, and, but could they augment it with a good running game? And he gave them that little punt coming to them from the New York Giants. Get it again. And it's dropped at midfield, but it's good enough for a first down. Michael Lewis up to make the stop. And that will more than likely be the final play of this opening quarter. 18 seconds left on the game clock. Play clock at 21 seconds. So Rodgers will come over to the sideline to talk things over with Mike McCarthy. So the end of the first quarter as the Packers in front of the 49ers 6 to 3 and Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages. Sometimes the numbers don't tell the entire story. Frank Gore had a 42 yard run. Alex Smith has not completed a pass. Rodgers big numbers in a passing game. Grant big numbers in the running game for Green Bay but it's only a three point spread. 
as we begin the second quarter at Lambeau Field. And Grant on first down picks up a yard, maybe two, stopped by Justin Smith. Well, Mike McCarthy loves the balance that he has right now in the pass and run, as you saw by, the, by those numbers. Now he's looking down, trying to, he loves the time of possession at home. He'd love to have nothing more than a good long drive. But again, Green Bay, one of the more explosive teams in the league, would love to pop one right here to change field position even more. Short drop. Throw and a catch defended nicely by the linebacker Manny Lawson. Running Jermichael Finley out of bounds at the 47 yard line. It'll bring up third down. And you can see they're willing to put Finley out wide as you do with any athletic tight ends. And you like the matchup that you get. Anytime you can take a guy like that and put him on the outside and hook him up with a linebacker, Manny Lawson, who is primarily a, a rush end, really, you'll take that matchup anytime you can get it. Rodgers on third and six. Incomplete, and a flag comes in. He was throwing to Jennings, who was defended by Terrell Brown. Holding defense, number 25. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. Jennings here motioning down in. And now as they work their way back out, Terrell Brown in replacing Nate Clemens, excuse me, the inside guy. He had nothing but grass to the outside. Had he not grabbed him and the ball would have been completed, he might have been able to turn up and get a big gain. So Brown taking, hoping he could get away with just a little bit of a hold there to keep the receiver from breaking outside. Coming back to make the reception is James Jones, just his 15th catch of the year. He had the big game against Tampa Bay when he caught four passes for 103 yards, but is not used as frequently, of course, as Jennings and Driver, and now the return of Finley at tight end. Well, this is vintage Mike McCarthy as well, constantly rowing personnel through, trying to keep the 49ers' defense off base in terms of what packages they need to run against these multiple personnel groupings. Rogers in trouble and threw it away. Isaac Sopoaga had a paw on him. They're going to they're going to discuss this. This could be intentional grounding here. They're going to get Rogers outside as he goes to throw the ball away. It's got to approach the line of scrimmage and they're discussing right, right now whether that ball approached the line of scrimmage. And a flag comes in. Intentional grounding, quarterback. Pass did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Ball be spotted at the place of the, of the foul, also loss of down. Not only a penalty, but of course the loss of down. And, and here's what we're talking about. Again, we're going to see him waggling to the outside. When you break contain, the rules for intentional grounding change. Nice job running him down. But once you've broken outside the alignment of the tackle, what they call the tackle to tackle box, the rules for intentional grounding change to where the ball has to pass or approach the line of scrimmage. So now a third and 17 for the Packers, backed up to the 49 or 48. Rodgers looking, looking, incomplete. So a huge penalty on the grounding call will force the Packers to punt it for the first time today. Well, and right now, even though the numbers, like we said in the open, what? Green Bay has great numbers. They're near the top of the league offensively in rushing and passing. But as you said, Tom, here we sit with the 6-3 game. 49ers have not given up the really big plays, and they're keeping this very, very tight. Jeremy Capanos punts it away, and it's into the end zone. So the 49ers will get it at the 20, 12.40 to play until halftime, trailing by three. Wide. 
Well, not very pretty numbers offensively for the Niners. Not a completed pass through a quarter and a couple of minutes plus. Frank Gore with the 42-yard run on their first possession, leading ultimately to a field goal. Smith looking around and sacked for a second time today by B.J. Raji, the rookie, the number one pick out of Boston College. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Well, Tom, if the offensive line, or at least the blocking of the 49ers, looks like they're having a problem, starting guard David Boss uh, injured on this play, a right ankle injury, unlikely to return. In fact, he was carted to the locker room, and already Michael Robinson, who helped out as a blocker from the fullback spot, out of the game for the 49ers. Tony Raji takes over at left guard for Boss. Gore straight ahead for a couple of yards. It'll bring up another third down for the Niners. And here you can see just as it kind of get rolled up in here, right in here in the ankle, one of those unfortunate injuries where you just get a lot of bodies piling on top. And this is going to stretch the 49ers a little bit. That left side being basically a new left side from the last couple weeks. Third and seven. Smith just throws it away. He was hit from behind by Clay Matthews. Still not a single completed pass in this game by Alex Smith and the 49ers and Alex Smith had Josh Morgan in behind the coverage with no one within 20 yards because of the pressure couldn't get his vision downfield to see the receiver would have been a huge play for the 49ers it's now 43 and out offensive series this season for the 49ers the only team with more the Oakland Raiders. Good punt by Andy Lee. Gets a favorable bounce to the 22 yard line. 11.06 to play until halftime. A three point game at Lambeau Field. Well, the numbers are very impressive statistically speaking. Rodgers, 9 of 14, 108 yards, 55 rushing yards for Grant. Jennings already 48 yards receiving. But only a pair of field goals for Green Bay in a 6-3 lead. Aaron to throw it on first down. Catch is made by Donald Driver. Tackled at the 26-yard line by Michael Lewis. Let's again go back to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee. Well, on the pregame show, our Pam Oliver talked about the young receivers in Minnesota. Here's the youngest of them, Percy Harvin. 23-yard touchdown reception from Brett Favre, and just seconds ago, Vicente Shaco also scored. It's 13-0 on top of Seattle, pending the extra point. So that means if they get it, it'll be 14-0. Tom? Well, that's very good math right there by Mr. Menefee. They get that point after it's 14. Michael Finley took a hit. Deshaun Goldson there to make the stop. It'll bring up third down. Well, I think the 49ers have figured out what we kind of knew going in that Finley's going to be a big part of this game plan because he's been a major part of it thus far in the game. And you're beginning to see the 49ers become a little more creative with their front seven, bringing the safety, Michael Lewis, bringing him down to the box to try to see if they can get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. So far, they haven't been able to really get to him. Third down and five. First down reception made by Greg Jennings to the 35. And this is just a vintage stop route. Just get to the chains. This ball's on the way before he even turns his head around. He knows where he's, he needs to be for the first down. Aaron Rodgers having faith in Greg Jennings to be where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. Jennings 
Jennings again with a man to beat. Inside the 10 to the end zone. This is the way the Green Bay Packers get their big plays. They throw underneath. They're one of the top 10 teams in the league in yards after catch. That's vintage Green Bay Packer. Get a guy on the run. Greg Jennings making a great cut at the top and now turning it into a vertical explosive touchdown. 64 yard touchdown pass from Rodgers to Jennings. Jennings now 12 touchdowns in his career that have gone for 40 yards or better. A home run hitter indeed. Four plays on the drive, all of them passing plays, capped off by the 64 yard touchdown for Greg Jennings, and of course, the Lambeau leap. Everybody does it now, but there's nothing like seeing the original in Lambeau Field. With Michael Robinson injured early in the game. They drop back Glenn Coffey along with Arnaz Battle. But the touchback negates any return by either one. Lunch with benefits. Your new prime time at FoxSports.com. Original shows delivered to your desktop every Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern. And on Coach Speak with Brian Billick. We're going to talk about passing routes, and we might even take a look at that slant that Jennings scored with. We're going to talk to people like Mike Singletary from the 49ers, Mike Smith in Atlanta, talk a little bit about the evolution of passing routes and where they sit in the NFL today. Of course, Mike Smith, a big one for the Falcons today against the slumping New York Giants. Smith looking for his first completion. And he can't even set to throw it before he's sacked by Cullen Jenkins. The third sack already in the game by Green Bay. And Dom Capers wasted no time bringing that pressure off that now weakened left side of the 49er line. Just collapse in the pocket going right over the left guard. Boss being, re uh, being re uh, replaced by Raggy. Dom Capers, he can dial up as many different looks as any defensive coordinator in the National Football League. Well, what tremendous success he has had. Incomplete and nearly intercepted after Al Harris batted the ball into the air. Let's send it back again to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. And again, it's Brett Favre with another touchdown pass. This time to his tight end, Pasante Shanko. And on top of the Seahawks are the Vikings. 14-0 in the second quarter. Tom? Thank you very much, Kurt. Third and 19. Grab tree spins away from a couple of tackles. So the first completed pass of the afternoon by Smith. But a very short gain and a third straight three and out for the 49ers offense. And again, I keep coming back to Tom San Francisco's inability to put the ball down the field. They've got to do something to change the emotional tide of what's going on in this game right now. And so far, they're just that constant progression of three and out. Well, the Packers figure to get great field position again. Andy Lee punts from his own five. It was nearly blocked. Tremont Williams lets it bounce. Perhaps should have come up and caught that one in the air. That's about a 15, 17 yard spread. There is a flag on the play. Just beyond the line of scrimmage. Illegal block in the back. Number 84, receiving team. Penalty will be forced from the end of the kick. First down. So now they'll back them up even further. 13-3, Packers in front. 
Yeah, Mike Singletary, I know the way he wants to win, but at some point he's got to give and put this team on Alex Smith's back. Alex Smith wants that. You could tell when we visit with him, he's ready to take those shots down the field. They're going to need it to combat this right now very balanced Green Bay Packer team. Packers have all three timeouts remaining and leading 13 to 3. Excellent coverage by Terrell Brown. Running step for step with Donald Driver, second down and 10, 7 11 to play until halftime. And what I'm talking about about these shots, Tom, the Green Bay Packers, again, a very balanced team. They take about one in six throws, they take those shots down the field. All right. Right now, the San Francisco for San Francisco 49ers, about one in 27. They're just not taking enough shots to try to create these big plays. Second and ten, they'll give it to Grant, who lost the handle, but covered it up immediately. That'll be a loss of a yard. So third down and 11 upcoming for Green Bay. And for Green for Green Bay uh, right here you can see this is the one thing they can't afford to do they're in total control of this game not quite the exchange something wasn't right between Ryan uh, Ryan Grant and Aaron Rodgers and that's the type of thing that'll send shivers through a head coach Mike McCarthy's spine right now because that's the one thing to get 49ers back into this. Third down, Rodgers looking screen to Brandon Jackson. And he has a first down and then some out to the 35. Jackson becoming so valuable since coming back from an ankle injury in the preseason, especially on third down. Just a classic screen here. You're going to see the lead. The tackle's going to set up field, invite the defensive tackle. Now you get the center guard out in front. First man takes first man outside. Second man leads up. Nice conversion on a third and long for the Green Bay Packers. Used to be a staple of this offense under Mike Holmgren. Now Mike McCarthy trying to tap back into it. 16 yard reception. They're coming after Rodgers. He gets it away. And it's caught over the middle by Donald Driver. Another first down close to midfield. Aaron Rodgers has a great deal of comfort with both his receivers. He's going to throw the ball where it has to be to be completed. Even if that means extending Donald Driver out a little bit, he has a great deal of faith in both their receivers' hands, Greg Jennings and Donald Driver, to throw them to the catch, a term that you hear more and more down there. already 217 passing yards to attack on a few more on the throw to Jordy Nelson and again let's check in downstairs with Chris Myers and Tom more injuries backup safety Mark Roman a rib contusion suffered so he's questionable for the remainder of the game and the Packers on the field here matching the physical intensity of the 49ers it's the third injury by a San Francisco player today Tom yep Roman along with boss along the offensive line and of course earlier Michael Robinson at the fullback position injured on the collision with Nick Barnett no running back here they are spreading this field out it's coming they get it away driver spun into the air and dropped in the 32 yard line Well, 34 years old in his 11th season, Driver showing no signs of slowing down. They got a three by two set, two receivers to the right, three to the left with no running back. And this is the type of throw we keep talking about. Good, safe, underneath throws, letting the athleticism of this gifted receiving core, Driver, Jennings, the tight end, Finley, and just stretching this 49er defense. Grant. Cuts it back to the inside, still on his feet. And a sizable gain yet again for Ryan Grant, run out of bounds at the 18. Rodgers, 235 passing yards. Grant, 70 rushing yards. And look at the total yards for Green Bay. 
And this adds to the difficulty to the San Francisco offense because once they go three and out, they're not getting the ball back for a large chunk of time. Closing in the three minute mark. Rodgers and just plain dropped by Finley. Chris Myers, let's check in. Well, after that last run, Tom, Mike Singletary walked down the sideline to tell the official, hey, come on, they're holding. They're holding on every play. And the official just shook him off, and Mike walked back towards his bench. You know, and you got to do that as a coach. You got to fight for your guys, but sometimes you also have to be careful. Don't build in an excuse for them. They start buying into that, start chipping at the official. There's no upside to that either. Second and 10 at the 9 or 18. Rodgers looking around. He has tremendous mobility. The leading runner among all quarterbacks in the NFL. And he's very close to another first down. It looks like he has enough. Well, here's Aaron Rodgers saying, OK, I'll show you athleticism. You let me fall to the 24th pick, San Francisco, because I'm not a good athlete. You watch this athleticism. Keeping his eyes downfield, no, now I'll tuck it away, and I'll show you what kind of athlete I am. Rodgers has rushed for now better than 240 yards this season. By far the most among all quarterbacks in the NFL. Of course, he's had to run for his life. Frequently. Jordy Nelson beat a man into the end zone. Jordy Nelson, a big wide receiver at about 6'4". Brown comes up, nice move for a big man, and now he's going to use his size to get it into the end zone. A lot of weapons. We talk about Driver, we talk about Jennings, we talk about Finley. Here's just another weapon for Mike McCarthy and the Green Bay Packers. Point after by Mason Crosby is good, so Nelson a walk on safety. That's right. A walk on safety at Kansas State. Turn wide receiver and now celebrates with the Lambeau Field faithful. Look at that smile. Oh yeah. Why wouldn't you pump your fist when you get to do that. Yeah, it got to be a great feeling. Don't know how many times he's been into the end zone necessarily. But so you don't know when you're going to get back. So I'm going to go into that crowd and enjoy it. Nelson like Finley coming all the way back from injury. While returning a punt he injured his knee against Detroit in week six then missed nearly a month before coming back against Dallas last week and again a second round draft choice. We're not talking about some guy they happen to run across in a seventh round. They thought Nelson had some big plays in him moving forward as a wide receiver. And the fact that they're willing willing to let a big athlete that like that return kicks that tells you about his athleticism you don't normally see a big man as a returner so they obviously have a lot of faith in his abilities and his athleticism well, the 49ers will get the football with under two and a half to play until halftime. Len Coffey smothered at the 19. Brady Papinga there to drop him. Well, give thanks to an all new animation domination. Jonah Hill as the super bad prankster on The Simpsons. An unforgettable Cleveland Thanksgiving, followed by an outrageous family guy and American dad. It all begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central tonight on Fox. All right. 223 to go until the half. You have all three timeouts remaining. Well, I got 52 yards in total offense. Whatever I was doing, it ain't working. We saw this team come back when they were down by 21 in Houston. They need to do what you're going to see here. Spread this thing out and see if Alex Smith can get us back in it, because right now they're not. Set up the screen, and how about that play by Jenkins?
This is just a great read from a six year veteran recognizing by the set of the line that the screen was on. He sees he sees that he feels them release and goes right to knowing that there had to be a back out there just by the way that the line attacked him and then allowed him to release. That's just a great veteran move by the six year player to get that kind of play out of the defensive line. Typically it takes a linebacker to diagnose a screen like that. Well they're very excited about all three members of that defensive front in this new three four scheme under Don Capers Cullen Jenkins Ryan Pickett in the middle and Johnny Jolly having a monster year on the other side. Well in the 34 scheme you've got to have that presence inside that's the anchor nothing flamboyant let your outside backers make the plays they're going to get the headlines but that interior line's got to be solid and they have one here in Green Bay. Well, Green Bay took a timeout they want the football one more time before halftime. Gore out to the 20 and I would imagine Green Bay's going to spend another timeout. Or are they going to let it run it down to the two minute warning. Yep they're going to do that it appears. But with an extra timeout if you will the two minute warning Green Bay rolling over the Niners with two minutes to play until halftime. Nice use of the clock by Mike McCarthy not taking a timeout. He's got two in his pocket. Let the two minute warning stop the clock. Now the 49ers who are likely to run the ball here. He's got a timeout that he can use save some time on the clock and he's going to get the ball back in his hands. Third down and nine for Alex Smith. Blitz coming. He gets it away. Vernon Davis a catch, but a wonderful open field tackle by the two time Pro Bowler Al Harris. Boy, these corners for Green Bay. Lights out Harrison Woodson. Typical Dom Capers bringing pressure from the outside to force the issue on Alex Smith, forcing him to get the ball out of his hands a little quicker, maybe, than he wanted to. And they're putting Al Harris or Charles Woodson. One of their two starting corners on Vernon Davis virtually an ever three wide receiver set. They know who the 49ers number one receiver is and they're putting their best assets one of those two veteran corners on Vernon Davis. Now having used the timeout uh, Green Bay is going to have plenty of time to let Aaron Rodgers go back to work with better than a one or just under 153 on the clock. Nice use of the clock by Green Bay. Excellent play by the defense. Ramon Williams standing at his own 35. And fields the Andy Lee punt at the 28. Across midfield. And is tackled at the 49er 45 yard line. A lot of shoving going on right around the pile. Like to remind you, coming up on the Visa halftime report, Curry, Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. Thank you. We'll have scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second scores and statistics. The guys are standing by in Los Angeles. Aaron Rodgers has hit seven different receivers today and has done so now in nine of the ten Packer games. Somebody's down here in the slot. Brandon Jackson for a three yard gain, and they'll hurry up to the line of scrimmage. 130 to play until halftime. Rodgers is hit on 19 of 26 for 246 yards. Move Finley. I keep pointing out Finley because that's the best matchup he has in a no huddle. Finley against a, a safety. But again, it's Brandon Jackson out of the backfield. He's down to a 25. Clock rolls down to one minute. San Francisco going very passive on their back end secondary wise, trying to account for this gifted receiving core, thus leaving the back just sneaking out of the backfield for good solid yardage with just these little dump off pass. 
Packers took a short time to even huddle up. There's Finley. Dropped to the 18. They may have to use a timeout here. Although they're not going to. Rodgers rushes him up to the line of scrimmage. He wants to say, he wants to save that timeout to make a third down call. If needed. Incomplete. To the far side intended for Greg Jennings. Mighty impressive numbers for Aaron Rodgers. You know it's so interesting coach it. There are those since Rodgers took over of course when Brett Favre left after 2007 it was the guy's first year as a starting quarterback and so many were quick to say ah yeah he piles up the numbers but he doesn't win enough games. It was his first starting year in the NFL and here he has his team a game over 500 this year. He rarely ever turns the ball over and has been sacked more than any quarterback in the league. Quickly getting out of bounds is James Jones. And that's a first down to the 13 yard line. Well there's no question right now Aaron Rodgers is taking great satisfaction in knowing OK. I like Alex Smith he's a good guy but I should have been the first pick in the draft because he's playing at an all pro level right now. This guy is on pace for a better than 30 touchdown season Tom and deserves the the attention that he's giving because he's playing very very well and on pace for fewer than 10 interceptions. Yeah unbelievable. Rodgers to the end zone. Incomplete. He was looking for Finley. You know, I want to get back to that a minute because, you know, you racked up so many huge offensive numbers as the offensive coordinator in Minnesota. You had such a great defense when you won the Super Bowl and went to the playoffs, what, five times in nine years with the Ravens as a head coach. But, you know, how much can you really put on the quarterback if his team is not winning games? Well it, it is obviously a total team dynamic but he's going to be the difference maker all things being equal the quarterback is going to be the difference for you good and bad years and right now he's the difference for the Green Bay Packers. Rodgers looking around he'll run it and steps out of bounds right at the first down mark at the three yard line there is one second left and out comes the field goal unit. Now that that that's I'd love to think that Aaron Rodgers could know exactly. I don't know if he was looking up at the clock here coming in and, and knew I'm not going to get in. You're dancing with the devil here now if he doesn't know that there's just that one second. I'd like to think that he knew he was on that fine line. He just saved them three points because stepping in bounds thinking you can get in the end zone would have cost them some points. Field goal try is good by Mason Crosby. So on the final play of the opening half, the lead swells to 20. Fox NFL Sunday continues with the Visa halftime report. After these messages and a word from your local Baker don't agree. I mean, that's five years old news really at the end of the day. Smith has been under unbelievable pressure every time he drops back. And, and when you get the kind of lead that Green Bay has, you can turn it loose like that. They have great confidence in their corners to match up one on one to turn their front seven loose like this Tom. So sacked three times Smith in the opening half minus seven passing yards. Let's go downstairs to Chris Myers. Well Tom uh, first of all Mike McCarthy was all smiles said he would like to run the ball more in the second half and can afford to said we're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball whatever they're doing we're able to counter it as for Mike Singletary he said his corners need to challenge the Green Bay receivers more and they have to find a way to put more heat on Rodgers and he said he doesn't want Alex Smith to panic uh, but the game has changed and he's going to have to unleash somebody on offense and he was in a real hurry to get to the locker room and I don't think it was to wish his team a happy Thanksgiving Tom no take a look at the final numbers from that opening half and clearly I mean it's not going to happen but on pace for 724 yards of offense are the Green Bay Packers here today. Well, I'm wow. Not, I'm not sure it's not going to happen. They're going to run the ball the second half and if you listen to Mike Singletary yes his corners have to challenge these receivers. They're going to build that box to stop the run. 
Aaron Rodgers is going to have some opportunities one on one outside with these receivers that he may want to take a few. We could get to that 700 yards. Oh. Well the 49ers are going to get the football to begin the second half and you know Brian I got to ask you I mean the 49ers are behind by 20 points here. It's no secret they're going to have to jump start this offense in a hurry. But how in the world do you do that when the other team knows that's exactly what you're going to do. Well and we saw the pressure they put on Alex Smith early when the game was still had some balance to it. This is what's going to test the 49ers. They're not necessarily built for this. We talked about Mike Singletary being committed to playing good defense running the ball. That's all well and good. But regardless of how the game is going right now you've got to throw on the back of Alex Smith who he brought in when he was down 21 to nothing against Houston. That's kind of what got Alex Smith back into the lineup. He brought them back within striking distance and almost pulled off the comeback against the Houston Texans about a month ago. And ever since then Smith has been the starter. This is his fourth straight game as a starter. He's thrown three touchdowns five interceptions and the starting role. Started seven games as a rookie in 2005 then took every offensive snap in all 16 games the following year started seven games in 2007 he was benched then injured his shoulder and did not play at all all of last year. Ball blown off the tee as we're set to begin the second half. We enjoyed the University of Wisconsin marching band at halftime Badgers took one on the chin yesterday and that does not make their athletic director Barry Alvarez all too happy. Well but Big Ten football is there anything better than Big Ten football. Great great atmosphere. Josh Morgan returning the kickoff to begin the second half and he's out to the 22 yard line. Opening possession they got the 42 yard run by Gore leading to a field goal four consecutive three and out since. Well and, and we talked with the 49ers they're committed to that running game and their passing game is not a vertical passing game. They better go to those vertical passes now. Offensive coordinator Jimmy Ray better pull that part of his game plan out because they're not going to get this Dinkin and Duncan down the way. They've got the athletes outside to do it. They go right to a no back set. Looks like they've finally given in to the fact that this is the way they're going to have to come back. Well let's see if they can do it. First down Smith a completed pass to his tight end Vernon Davis. That'll be up to the 29 yard line a gain of close to seven. Well and obviously when when you're three and out not only does it bode well for the opposing offense in Green Bay but you lose the field position battle as you can see here San Francisco having to start barely to their 20 yard line Green Bay's had the advantage of starting out on the 32. Gain of eight on first down blitz coming incomplete and there is a perfect example of what can Alex Smith do. He barely had planted his back foot through to a receiver on a three yard out and couldn't even throw it to him because he was under so much pressure. And that's part of the difficulty when you spread it out the way the 49ers have to now you create those short edges from the tackle to get into the passing lanes of the quarterback. Smith looking around he'll run it himself and has a first down. Well that's a good way to get it started for the 49ers they'll move the chains and these the secondary of the Green Bay Packers are sitting all over these routes. Uh, you know here we see, we see Charles Woodson again he's matching up mostly with Vernon Davis now San Francisco's got some assets Tom. Michael Crabtree on the outside Josh Morgan a big receiver bring Isaac Bruce one of the great all time receivers in they've got some assets to put down the field but they've got to challenge this Green Bay secondary. Coming on the blitz was Barnett and after the handoff to Gore he had nowhere to go. 
Again, hoping that they get passive with this front seven of the Packers, hoping to drop a little draw in here. Nick Barnett was going to have none of it. Dom Capers dialing up an inside dog by the two linebackers that stuff off any running lanes on a play like this. Blitz coming again. Down the field. What a throw and what a catch. And what a hit by Atari Bigby. But Smith, his first big completion of the afternoon to Vernon Davis. And they went to a two tight end alignment, bounced Delaney out, and then just put Vernon Davis, again, the fastest receiver on this team, right down the middle. They went with three verticals. Obviously, he liked the matchup here. By going to the two tight ends, he got that nickel personnel off the field and got Green Bay back into a more base personnel. Even with that now, I imagine Green Bay is going to stay in their nickel personnel package. 32-yard gain. They pick up the blitz. Smith on a crossing route. Cam had dropped in coverage along with Clay Matthews. They leave Matthews on the inside both as a rusher and as a defender. I got to tell you, when I saw Clay Matthews at practice on Friday, I was very, very impressed with the young man just physically. He's got some size. You can see the athleticism. He's a football player. There's no question about it. And again, Green Bay staying with their nickel personnel, much like they did most of the game last week against the Dallas Cowboys. Seventh play of the drive. Smith, a dangerous throw. Harris step for step with Crabtree. There again, you can see the veteran corner recognizing Cap Crabtree's going to make his second move. He had help over the top. So that gave a corner like Al Harris, knowing that he had help over the top, he can wait for that side-to-side -side move of Crabtree. That veteran experience of Woodson and Harris play big dividends in their ability to anticipate what a receiver's going to do. Third and ten. Across the middle and trying to stretch his way to a first down is Jason Hill. He appears to be about a yard or two short. When you're down by 20 in the third quarter, do you go for it on fourth down? You haven't been down here for a while. You, you've got it. You've got to go for it. I don't know that a three points are going to be. That's the ultimate definition of bleeding to death slowly. <laughs> Chipping away with field goal serves no purpose right here. You've got to get seven on the board. Five of nine on fourth downs this season is San Francisco. Fourth and two. And they're going to have to burn a timeout. Mike Singletary after the timeout still going for it on fourth down and two. Well, Green Bay has got its nickel personnel in the game to spread out with the 49ers, clearly anticipating pass. Again, they got Woodson over here on Vernon Davis, the 49er go-to guy. Nearly intercepted. Matthews hammers Smith as he threw. So the fourth down attempt fails and the Packers will get the football. Well, I love Frank Gore's just slipping out of the backfield in here. I doubt that he was the primary because when I have Vernon Davis, Josh Morgan, Isaac Bruce, Crabtree, I don't know that Gore's going to be my primary, but with the pressure that Matthews was able to put on, Alex Smith just looking for some place to get the ball off. So now the first possession of this second half for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers after rolling up 362 yards of total offense. 
in the first half, and he'll come out throwing on first down. Dangerous throw there by Rodgers. He's being chased by Sopoaga. And that's a good play call by defensive coordinator Greg Minuski because what do we say? You know the Green Bay is going to come out and pound away. Green Bay probably anticipating a hard eight man box and would maybe get one of those matchups I alluded to earlier. So a good play call by Minuski and the 49ers. Ryan Grant 70 rushing yards in the first half. Flag comes down after a gain of 12. That was in the backfield. Holding. Offense, number 63. 10-yard penalty, second down. That's the center, Scott Wells. This line has protected Rodgers beautifully here today. A line that has allowed 41 sacks, by far the most among all teams in the NFL going into week 11. And they have done a nice job, but I give Aaron Rodgers a lot of credit, too. He has been his own worst enemy with some of those sacks, Tom. He has held the ball a little bit. He has moved the, around in the pocket very, very well today. And a second and 20. Jordy Nelson run out of bounds by Spencer. At the 26 yard line third and long for the night the Packers. Last time in this situation the Packers called on one of those patented screens. Uh, Ryan Grant doing a nice job wiggling his way through to the first down 49ers might anticipate that a little bit again might look for that second level throw by that I mean that 10 to 15 yard throw in behind the level of the linebackers to see if they can convert. Brandon Jackson checks in the game and catches the pass out of the backfield, but denied first down yardage. Well, some early game headliners. The quarterback position so far. How about the wild one going on between the Lions and the Cleveland Browns? They have combined for 51 points in the first half. Stafford back healthy, playing well today. Eli Manning and the Giants, a 10 point lead over Atlanta last check. Yeah, and the young man Fitzpatrick coming in in Buffalo to see if he can give them some life. Reggie Smith just put in the game to try and return the punt and was lucky he didn't turn it over at the 32 yard line. Twenty three to three Green Bay in front. 940 to play in the third quarter. Batted down and then nearly intercepted by Cullen Jenkins. The difficulty for the 49ers right now, Tom, is they're running an offense. They've only spent so much time practicing. Uh, they've had to go to their two minute, their nickel packages that this is not what the 49ers are. They're prepared for it. They have a package to run. But given the amount of time during practice that they spent obviously with their running offense, this is kind of new territory for them. Much harder to execute when you don't get the same amount of practice time. Smith six out of 15 has been under heavy pressure. Good throw there. And the catch made depending on the spot by the tight end Davis. It might be enough for a first down. Keep in mind now Alex Smith coming out of college. This this was his offense Tom Urban Myers at, at the time at Utah. He's very comfortable with the spread offense. So even though this hasn't been a staple of the 49ers one asset they do have is a quarterback that's used to operating from the gun with a spread offense. Of course, so many changes for Smith since those days playing for the Utes under Urban Meyer. All the changes with head coaches, offensive coordinators, and he's showing you he still can throw it with some accuracy when given time. That's Davis inside the 30 down to the 25 yard line. 
And what I like is when he recognizes the matchup. Look at the air on this ball. This is a very precise throw. This is one of the few times we haven't seen either Charles Woodson or Al Harris. He had a Jared Bush on him. Not the Bush isn't a good secondary man, but obviously not one of those starting corners. He liked the matchup that he had with Bush on Vernon Davis. First down of the 28, Smith. Tries to thread the needle once too often there. No chance to complete that throw to Davis. And look what, again, Dom Capers playing this match game. What they do? They took Charles Woodson, put him right back on Davis because he had to know, look, he went to him once. I'm not going to tempt fate the second time. I'm going to take one of my shutdown corners and put him on their number one guy and take away Vernon Davis from Alex Smith. You're going to have to beat me with somebody else. Second down and ten. Blitz coming again. Flag comes in from deep in a secondary. Catch is made by Isaac Bruce. But again, flags everywhere. Three of them on the field. Scott Green, our referee. I don't know who it was, but somebody pushed somebody. I'm back. Interference, offense, number 85, 10 yard penalty, second down. Yeah, Vernon Davis and Charles Woodson were hand fighting at the top of his route. Again, it's one of those, which way do you want to call it? This time they felt like Vernon Davis was getting away a little bit too much with the pushing and shoving. And now it's uh, we got the uh, here Crabtree on that side long tried to give you a look at that really didn't have the look at, at Vernon Davis down the field was up on the right side again this constant chess match of Don Capers who do I put on Vernon Davis they've got Bush back on Davis now to free up Harris and Woodson elsewhere second down at 20 pump fake looking for Bruce Caught but out of bounds by Clement Williams. Injured Packer down, and while we have a moment, let's check in with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. Giants trying to put a little separation between themselves and the Falcons. Brandon Jacobs takes it there from two yards out to help that cause. They lead it by 10 with about four minutes to go in the third quarter right now. Tom, Bryan, and Chris. All right, Mr. Menifee, thank you very much. The injured Packer is Aaron Campman. Of course, he missed the game last week in the win over Dallas after suffering a concussion against Tampa Bay. So we'll step aside, 7.35 to play in the third quarter. Still tending to Aaron Campman. Two-time pro bowler. Who, as we mentioned, missed last week's game. With a concussion against Tampa Bay and had to sit out against Dallas. Alex Smith looking for Crabtree. What a catch by Crabtree for a touchdown. Beautifully thrown ball by Alex Smith in the corner of the end zone. And Al Harris was with Crabtree right down to the final reception. And I want you to watch at the top of this, Tom. When you talk to people about Crabtree, the first thing everybody talks about is the strength and sure enough, sureness of his hands. That once he gets his hands on the ball, that thing is not coming out. That was just a good, strong uh, reaching for the ball, not letting it come to you, reaching up, and then bringing it back into the body. First career touchdown for Michael Crabtree. And if you watched him at Texas Tech, if you watched him the first four games in his NFL career, there'll be a lot more of those in his future. First touchdown for Michael Crabtree since he wore a Texas Tech Red Raiders uniform. 
And that makes it a 23-10 game. There's still a lot of football left to be played here in Lambeau Field. Jordy Nelson will take a knee. And speaking of knees, Aaron Camden parted off the field a moment ago, letting people know hopefully that he is all right. It didn't look so good when it happened. No, and no, not real contact. You can see his left knee here. It just buckles a little bit. No one fell on it. He didn't get anybody twisted up. It just buckles a little bit, and that's concerning when you see a knee injury like that. Hopefully, it's just a slight strain because this would be a big, big loss for the Green Bay Packers. Packers went three and out their first possession of this half. Quick throw to Jennings, who already has better than 120 receiving yards in the game today. For more on Aaron Kamen, here's Chris. Well, Tom, as you said, he came back from the concussion last week. In the pregame warm-ups, he told me he was very cautious about that, but he wants to play. This is not concussion-related, although there was blood coming out of his left ear that the trainer quickly toweled off. But it is a knee injury. They are taking him in for x-rays, questionable for the remainder of the game. Great to have Chris Myers back with us again this week. They give it to Ryan Grant. And he has a first down at the 31 yard line. Boy, great lead block by the fullback, Corey Hall. Grant started to come around that edge, and Corey Hall, just like you want a fullback to do, everybody was engaged. He doubled on the outside, moved the entire pocket that allowed. Ryan Grant to get around the edge. Grant adding to his 75 yard rushing numbers with a gain of nine and delivered a little punishment to Patrick Willis. Forty one sacks allowed by the Green Bay Offensive line on Rodgers this year, not a today. And as I say again, I give Aaron Rodgers a lot of credit today for his movement in the pocket. The line's been blocking well, make no mistake. Having Clifton back at left tackle, Tauscher at right. But Aaron Rodgers has moved very effectively in the pocket today. Grant again. This time met by Abrea Franklin. A gain of close to three. First down. And this is where I think we've got to see the 49ers continue to commit the people to stop the run by building primarily Michael Lewis. Greg Minuski is going to bring Michael Lewis down into that that box we keep talking about because he can't let. The Green Bay Packers just run it down his throat right now, which could present some opportunities on the outside. Brandon Jackson smothered at the 45 yard line by Patrick Willis. Bring up the speed on some of the games around the National Football League and look at Dallas. Held to just seven points here last week, getting shut out at home by the Redskins. They were booing video of Brett Favre touchdown passes here at Lambeau a moment ago. And the real surprise on that upper right hand corner, Kansas City tied at 17 with the Steelers that game now in the fourth quarter. Well, there'll be some splaining to do if that one holds up. <laughs> Rodgers looking for driver and closing quickly to save a touchdown. The 11 year veteran out of North Carolina, Dre Bly. Well, just what we talked about the minute they come down to commit to the run, Aaron Rodgers taking an opportunity. Nice job with a vertical over the top. Needed just a tad more air to give a chance for Donald Driver to come underneath it. Touches the hand. That's one you tend to put on the receiver saying, gosh almighty man, you couldn't have pulled that one in. 
It's a very big play now for the Niners defense. Try and get the ball back here in the third quarter. They just do get the playoff. And is that intercepted? No, incomplete. It hit the ground. But it is a stop for the Niner defense. Now all of a sudden they're going to get the football back with a chance to pull within six if they can get down the field and score another touchdown. And San Francisco's got to have a great deal of confidence right now. As confident as you can be being down by 13 points with this stop defensively and what they just did on the last possession. Again Reggie Smith. Back returning punts. And dropped. At the 11 by Desmond Bishop. Alex Smith and the Niners trailing by 13. A lot of football left in Green Bay. Green Bay leading 23 to 10. The 49ers have the football at their own 12 yard line. Trailing by 20 at the half. They have very much for obvious reasons opened up this offense. And they put together a couple of good drives failing on fourth down the first drive before scoring on the touchdown throw to Crabtree the second drive. Completion there out to the 17 yard line. Well we said before now San Francisco has the weapons whether it be Michael Crabtree Vernon Davis Josh Morgan on the outside Isaac Bruce they can split Frank Gore out they have the weapons in this spread style of play to go after you and for Green Bay it's about the matchups where do you put Woodson or Harris which of these guys do you want to put them on right now they're moving them around play clock may have expired there ball start nope. offense number eighty nine. Five yard penalty, second down. Jason Hill. Well, the first half you can see here, Alex Smith throwing the ball, had no chance to get any kind of rhythm because it was three and out, three and out, and Green Bay just didn't give the ball back. Now in the second half, having a chance to throw the ball a little bit under tough circumstances because they're going to bring pressure. The line's under uh, under tough duress here. He's at 50 percent right now again looking for those big plays down the field. Second and six turns into second down at 11. Gore. For a couple of yards. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. Best contest of the day going on in Detroit. Cleveland and the Lions. Cleveland was up 24 to 3, but that touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford to Will Heller puts Detroit on top, 31-27. Tom and Bryan is to show that on any given Sunday, both Quinn and Stafford have combined for seven touchdown passes, and they're in the third quarter. Wow. Who would have thought that? Only in Cleveland versus Detroit. <laughs> Maybe they're getting warmed up for Could a big extravaganza. Yeah, great second half run on well, Thanksgiving. Third down. Smith just does get it away. Under pressure twice. First time from Tremont Williams. Second time by Brad Jones. Jones a good looking player. He started in place of Camden last week. And they're bringing pressure off the, the, these double cat blitzes right into the face of the offense if you can get outside of it you're vulnerable down the field but nice job forcing the ball out of Alex Smith's hands very quickly. Tremont Williams stands at midfield. Andy Lee punts it away. And Williams continues to let a lot of those punts bounce in front of him rather than coming up and making even a fair catch. Well Sunday December the 6th. The show all sports fans have been waiting for the nation's best college football teams will be chosen to play in college football's biggest games. The Allstate BCS selection show Sunday December 6 at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific only on Fox the only bowl we know for sure of the BCS bowl teams bowl eligible teams is Ohio State will play in the Rose Bowl. The Buckeyes have played in more BCS games than any other school. 
How did I know we were going to get an Ohio State reference? In well, there? they're the only team. I mean, we got to give them a plug. Oregon and Oregon State will battle to play Ohio State. First half carried by Ryan Grant is out to the 47 yard line. Grant closing in on a 100 yard rushing day. He has one of those already this year. And the 49ers can't let this happen if Green Bay can get a sense that they can continue to run the ball with success. They're going to gobble up a clock that now is going to become increasingly more a factor. They've got to build that eight man even if necessary nine man box to not let Green Bay Green Bay getting into configuration here two tight ends two running backs they want to play some smash ball. Grant. Is dropped for a loss coming up to make a nice play there Michael Lewis from the safety position. After a Brea Franklin forced Bryant to try and break it to the outside. Franklin having a Pro Bowl year. He is and they their intention to make him a franchise player. Brea was with us in uh, in Baltimore was it's fun to watch a young man progress the way he has went over to NFL Europe kind of learned his trade came back and now has earned himself into that franchise title title that tag I should say very profitable tag to have second down catch into Niner territory to the 46 is James Jones short of a first down third down and two. The Packers will have to run one more play before the end of the third quarter. About a three second differential. Well, as odd as it sounds, getting yourself even into field goal position with this drive could be huge because now you take it past that two score differential that we always talk about. A timeout with one timeout. second on the play clock and three seconds timeout. to go in the quarter. That's the math. <laughs> it's frustrating, but I had two more seconds than I had to burn, so I had to use the timeout. Well, Fox tomorrow on an all new episode. House takes on a baffling case where the mind of a genius is slowly being destroyed and will Thanksgiving bring everyone together or tear them apart an all new episode of House tomorrow night 8 Eastern 7 Central on Fox as always viewer discretion is advised. Michael Lewis we visited with the other day when the 49ers came in and very serious minded young man he this is all business to him and he needs to be all business right now. Third down crossing pattern. And the catch is made by Brandon Jackson out of the backfield and that will be the final play of the third quarter. 23 10 Packers. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a word from your local Fox station. Set to begin the fourth quarter at Lambeau Field. A couple of teams as we talked about before kickoff. Around noon local time. The 49ers ending a four game losing streak by beating Chicago last Thursday night to get within a game of 500 with an eye on the postseason the Packers after a shocking loss two weeks ago against Tampa Bay rebounded to defeat Dallas last Sunday right here in Green Bay a game over 500. Blitz coming and for the first time today down goes Rodgers in the arms of Paris Harrelson. Green Bay's been playing a good deal of no back and again what does that do that cuts down the edges the angles from these tackles puts them out on an island that's very difficult for these tackles and now for the first time they get to in a very critical time moving them back away from field goal position 49ers getting to Aaron Rodgers 
in the Green Bay Packers. Rodgers sacked in nine of the ten games this year. The only game he wasn't sacked was against Cleveland. He steps up and off the hand of Donald Lee. First time we've called his name today. A much better quarter for Alex Smith and the Niners. But Rodgers, another 300 yard passing day. Seventh in his career. And nearly an entire quarter to play. And the Niners looking for a stop here on third and 22 to try and get it back and get even closer. Again, Packers are thinking get back in the field goal range. Jackson out of the backfield. And not sure they're going to try. Mason Crosby has missed four of his last five field goal attempts from 50 yards and beyond. This would be right at a 55 yard attempt, and they're not even going to think about it. Yeah, that's too risky. You'd be giving, if you miss this, you'd be giving San Francisco the best field position they would have to have started the entire game. You're in too much of control of this game to take that kind of risk. Look at your old team Baltimore <laughs> leading now Indianapolis 15 to 14 Boy, the Ravens have been reeling. That'd be a big pickup for them. And. <laughs> down at the one. Derek Martin flipped it backwards and it was downed at the one yard line. Twenty three to ten Green Bay in front. And the Niners backed up against their own goal line. Officially downed at the two. Smith to throw on first down. Intercepted by Nick Collins. Green Bay defense now with a takeaway in 12 straight games. And their 14 interceptions, third most in the NFL. And you're going to see Vernon Davis down the field. This goes back to what we talked about the unfamiliarity of each other in this style of play. He. The numbers, Vernon Davis bending it in at the last minute. Again, the lack of familiarity in, in, in these types of plays because of the 49ers commitment to the running game during the course of the week. Of course, Collins, his third interception this year, he tied with his teammate Charles Woodson for the NFC lead was seven a year ago. Three of which, by the way, he returned for touchdown. So now Grant from the 12 picks up about two and a half. And Grant. Right at the 100 yard mark. They're going to say 99 yards officially rushing today for Ryan Grant. Ran for 148 yards against Cleveland. A couple of other games he's gone over 90. And now a third game over 90. You'd again anticipate a run here. Not wanting to take too many chances. Although Mike Check McCarthy you. certainly trusts his quarterback with only five interceptions on the year. Play action. Rodgers. There's a bullet caught by driver. Let's see where they spot it. Jones, I beg your pardon on the reception, not Donald Driver. They spot it at the 10. So third down and eight. From just inside the 10 yard line. And this is typically where you're going to see a defense just put a whole bunch of pieces, passive or defenders passive into the end zone, make you throw it underneath, and we'll come up and make the tackle, keep you out. What a throw! A dart 
In there by Rodgers, and it's caught by Jermichael Finley. Right at the goal line, maybe a couple of inches short from being a touchdown. My, oh my. Th this, this is the sixth catch for Finley. This is impressive. Again, that ball's gone barely as he comes out of his break. Both Finley and Rodgers on the same page. This is a laser shot right at the goal line. For a signal. Still none now, a touchdown. It all started with the interception by Nick Collins. And Grant barrels in. point good by Crosby 20 point game one yard touchdown run from Ryan Grant all of course set up by the interception from Nick Collins 30 to 10 the Packers lead it 11 minutes and five seconds away from Going to six and four on the year. It'll be a short week for the Packers. Playing here on Fox Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. Josh Morgan, the yard deep in his own end zone. And he's got some running room. Out across midfield. Still streaking down the sideline and caught at the 25 yard line by Brandon Underwood. Well, all three phases set up this last score for the Green Bay Packers. Here you can see Derek Martin beautifully getting the ball down on the one yard line, which led then to the interception by Nick Collins, intercepting Alex Smith. That then leads to the plunge by Ryan Grant for the touchdowns. All three phases of the Green Bay Packers clicking on all cylinders. And that's one of the areas you talked about before the game today, Brian Billick, that the Packers needed to improve their special teams play. Having they said were that. They're going to be better in the <laughs> second half of the year. Having said that, they just gave up a huge kickoff <laughs> return, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll only pat them so much on the back. Blitz coming again. Dangerous throw. This is just a nice return now. Josh Morgan, we've talked about the athleticism of this young receiver that they're excited about. It's this just getting to bounce into the outside. Anytime a return man can reverse field and get that wide, it usually is a problem. This is the type of play that has plagued the Packers, certainly in the Tampa Bay game as well. 25 yards away from the catch by Frank Gore, Al Harris. Their outstanding corner went down, and he is in pain. This is Tracy Palm. Well, Al Harris being taken off after suffering an injury, which I don't think anybody saw in the entire crowd. 30 yards away from the field in the back of the end zone in coverage against Michael Crabtree. And we certainly hope that Harris is okay. But Brandon Underwood, rookie out of Cincinnati, takes over for Harris. Smith throws it away. Yeah, Al Harris here, we're going to see on the replay. He's just covering the slot receiver here, Michael Crabtree, and he ends up going out. He's just trailing him, so it's not like they got tied up or anything. The play's over. We can't see what happened, but it had to be clearly just an open space because they were not engaged with one another at all. A 
Chris Myers is standing by with more right after this third down for the 49ers. Into the end zone, touchdown, Vernon Davis. Vernon Davis for the touchdown. This is the throw we saw earlier into Vernon Davis. It's the exact same throw that Alex Smith threw two touchdown passes to, to Vernon Davis in their comeback effort against Houston. Just a beautiful throw right over the top of the linebacker. Vernon Davis knew where the ball was coming. Tough for a coverage man to trail that way and not know where the ball is. Joe Nedney on for the point after. Still 10 37 to play here at Lambeau Field and it is good. Chris Myers. Let's check in on the Al Harris injury Chris. Al Harris apparently has a knee injury. They're taking him for x-rays. One of the officials an eyewitness said he planted his foot turned and keeled over in pain. He is out for the remainder of this game and will continue from Green Bay in a moment. 24 yard touchdown reception by Vernon Davis all on the heels of Josh Morgan's 76 yard kickoff return and again a two score differential right now with the 49ers trailing 30 to 17 Jordy Nelson brings it out to the 23 let's go back to the touchdown. Well this is just three verts going down the field Vernon Davis going to go right down the field with Clay Matthews trailing in behind trying to keep it from getting to Vernon Davis. Again we saw two of these exact same throws against the Houston Texans when Alex Smith was inserted back into the lineup so it's not like Green Bay hadn't seen these. That's just a well thrown ball. Very difficult to defend for a trailing linebacker. Well he talked about the tight ends coming into this game. Davis now with nearly as many touchdowns this season as his first three years combined. But both Davis and your Michael Finley returning from injury as you suspected Brian Billick have had big days today. Davis six catches 108 yards and a touchdown. Your Michael Finley. Six receptions. And 49 yards. Second and seven of the 26. Aaron Rodgers now these again the numbers that it all comes down is it a win. And we'll find out here as we close in on it but. Aaron Rodgers you can't not be impressed with what he's done with all the hubbub about Brett Favre leaving and the pressures that he's had to play with two back to back impressive seasons right now. You know Brian we started to talk about it earlier on the completion of driver but you know I use two guys as one of the most baffling cases that I can think of in recent memory when you talk about quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers on one side Jay Cutler on the other. Cutler of course a three year starter in Denver piled up these huge you know fantasy league statistics but never got his team in the playoffs and nobody ever really said a lot about it. He came to Chicago and they anointed him as a guy that was going to take the Bears to a Super Bowl which he may do one day. But Rodgers in only his first year as a starter last year piled up huge numbers through for over 4000 yards as he sacked at the 25 but it seemed like in many circles there were a lot of people beating him up for not taking his team to the playoffs last year in only his first year. Yeah I think and a lot of it came from not only him but the organization making the decision to go away from Brett Favre. It was as though they were saying OK you said this is your guy but boy he better get us into the playoffs. Ne negating the fact that you know what it wasn't a playoff caliber team and it was probably an unfair uh, observation by those that chose to do that. There's no question that Aaron Rodgers is playing at elite level and he's backed it up from one season to the next. Well after the sack they'll put it Reggie Smith what a kick indeed by Capitos Smith is tripped. At the 27 yard line flag comes in very late. I mean that came from 25 yards down the field. I mean it looked like a trip by the man who made the tackle. But coming from where that flag the came from. Block in the back during the return number 50 receiving team 10 yard penalty first down. 
Trying to say, but from where that flag came, it was not going to be that. They get Briggs on the illegal block in the back. Fox tonight give thanks to an all-new animation domination. Jonah Hill's the new super bad prankster on The Simpson. He's going to give Bart a run for his money. Celebrate the best 20 years ever with an all-new Simpsons tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. And this is where it gets dangerous now with the clock as a factor in terms of Green Bay willing to let it loose and come after Alex Smith. And that's Underwood on a face mask or a horse collar. One or the other. This will be a 15 yard penalty. And give. Personal foul. Grabbing the face mask. Number 33 defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Trying to say give him a little more breathing room. That's Underwood who's replacing Al Harris. Yeah, and now as you can see him closing in, you're just grasping for anything you can. Hand ends up a little high, catches clearly. Anytime you see the head turn that quickly, you know the call's going to come. Underwood getting pressed into duty a little bit more with obviously Al Harris out. Be interesting to see if Green Bay becomes a little more passive with their coverage package with one of their top corners out of the game. Smith steps up. Throws to Isaac Bruce. He makes the catch for a first down at midfield. And let's go to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee. The Redskins have been leading the Cowboys all day long. Yeah, it's only 6 nothing, but hey, it's a lead, right? Tony Romo escapes and finds Patrick Creighton for the go-ahead touchdown with under three minutes left. Dallas has come back. Now they're trying to hang on as they lead at 7-6 late in the fourth. Tom Bryant. Kurt, thank you so much. That's back-to-back. Ugly games on offense for the Dallas Cowboys, but a win is a win. We'll see if they can hang on. Smith looking for Crabtree, and he makes a catch inside the 20. And all of a sudden, the 49ers are knocking on the door. Yeah, and I want you to watch the body presence here of Crabtree, the initial, how he gets into position, trail position by the corner. But just that strong body position to come back to the ball. This is a bigger, stronger receiver than, than you realize until you actually see him play. Well, challenging this call is head coach Mike McCarthy. Threw the red flag in Green immediately. Is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a completed pass. We'll see the only thing he can hope is that maybe there was a subtle bobble as he was going to the ball. It looked like he caught it. Yeah you what you now know is was his hand underneath it again it was ruled to catch so the all familiar it has to be irrefutable evidence clearly the ball is bobbled but right there of course that gives us no view because we don't know where it was into the body. So far, I'm not sure we've seen anything to indicate that it ever touched the ground. It's on the hand there. He's got control. I don't know. I'm not sure I see anything there, Tom. Because you don't know how much of the hand he had underneath the ball. I'm not sure the official has enough to overturn it. Had it been ruled the other way, I don't know that it had enough to, to overturn it that way either. So I think the, the play or the call on the field is going to have to stand here. We'll see. Well, McCarthy this year is two of five in replay challenges. And again, it's one of those, well, why not? You know, why not take a chance? This is a big enough play. Puts him down in scoring position. Whether I think I saw it or not, or somebody up in the booth saw it or not, the fact that there's enough of a, a, a chance that there's some uncertainty, what the heck, throw the flag. Well, this didn't take very long. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver, although he bobbled the ball, he gained possession, never touching the ground. It's first down. Green Bay is charged with a timeout. That is an excellent explanation by Scott Green. It is. It is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it confirmed the call, but it wasn't enough to overturn it.
You know, I, I got I got I got to stand in front of the line in terms of of I underestimated Michael Crabtree when we last had him. What did I say? Well, if he just doesn't fumble the ball and get hurt, he's ahead of the curve coming in late. This is it for him to do what he's done coming in as late as he did this season. He uh, he's the real deal. Forty Niners at the 15 the slant no flag. Vernon Davis wanted a flag on Tremont Williams didn't get it second down. Look it looked to me like he kind of pulled up. I don't know the way he was anticipating the call. I guess he had to pull up a little bit in that the throw was in behind him. I'd have been upset on either side of the ball <coughs> had that call been made. I don't know if it was enough to give the call in a critical situation. 6.48 to play in the fourth quarter. Smith, a low throw, but it's caught by Morgan, who gets tangled up over there with Jared Bush. It is a completed pass at the 10 yard line. Clock running, and a third down upcoming for the 49ers. Well, and clearly you've got to have it's four down territory. You're not, you're not going to walk away with Run the time the differential Lord. that we have right now. With six minutes and 20, you need the touchdown. They've been bunching it up. Everything they're doing, they're trying to get some kind of combination on this three receiver side with the short motion, trying to shake somebody loose. And batted down at the line of scrimmage, a fourth down. And down by 13. I think it's a pretty safe bet that they're going to go for it. Actually kind of lucked out here as I said they motion into this bunch look. The receiver fell down but nice job by again so often you see defensive line. Do we want to the rush so I'll let up and jump and see if I can knock this thing down. Great technique by a veteran defensive lineman fourth and five. Four man rush left Gore all alone and he is yes into the end zone a touchdown. So now with just under six minutes to go the 49ers are a point after away from trailing by just six. And Frank Gore gives you this kind of latitude people forget how good Frank Gore is at a receiver of course anytime you get the ball in his hands. He's got that kind of capability, but Frank Gore in 2006 had 60 plus receptions. So he's capable of catching the ball and doing some damage with it coming out of the backfield. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And don't look now, but it is a six point game at Lambeau Field. Alex Smith, who in the opening half hit on three of seven, was sacked three times. And because of the sacks the Niners had minus seven yards passing in the first half. Well since then yes Smith has thrown a key interception here in the second stanza but he's also thrown for two hundred twenty seven yards and now three touchdowns. And I think the point needs to be made Tom that people will look at this and say well OK uh, Green Bay's been in that passive uh, prevent zone and he's been able to slice it up. That's not the case. Dom Capers and Green Bay they've been playing this straight up. They don't do that. So this is a straight up defense that he's doing this against. Now we've seen this twice now we've seen it here. We saw it in the come uh, from behind trying to get a victory at Houston. I think at some point San Francisco has got to say you know what this may be who we have to be. Alex Smith has some capability here. We have some receivers. I know we won't play good defense and run the ball but this may be who we have to be to win games. Jordy Nelson stands back <laughs> waiting to kick from Joe Nedney and Nelson right at the goal line will bring it out. Great special teams coverage by the 49ers and there is a penalty flag down. Glenn Coffey rookie running back out of Alabama making the tackle.
holding, receiving team, number 29, half the distance to the goal, first down. Now this just turned this into a field position game, Tom, because now the 49ers are in great position. Again, three and out. Give themselves a chance with a one score game. We'll have a chance to talk with coach speak with Mike Singletary on Tuesday about the sequence that has happened and is about to happen. Well now uh, if you're Green Bay because of where you are do you roll the dice and throw the football. Yeah with Aaron Rodgers playing the way he is I have no second guesses about that. Ryan Grant in the backfield on first down they'll hand it to him. And he picks up a couple of yards. Closer to four on the carry by Grant, dropped by Patrick Willis. All of a sudden, the numbers looking very good for Smith after doing literally nothing in the first half, had no time to throw. Rodgers had the monster first half. They've gotten extremely conservative here in the second half. Well as we said earlier I think I think San Francisco has to take a good a hard look at what is our personality going to be with the quarterback we've got playing for us right now. Second down and six they'll stay on the ground and Grant picks up a yard. Now critical third down. Conversion now for Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy, trying to come up with the best call because a a three and out here, and again the familiarity of Greg Minuski and Mike McCarthy were together. Uh, this is fascinating as to I know what he's going to do, he knows what I'm going to do. Let's see how it turns out because this is a huge third down backed up for the Green Bay Packers. Need to get to the 19-yard line. And they're bringing the house on Rodgers who gets it away and a first down completion to Jermichael Finley. That's a big third down conversion. Again the young tight end coming up big. Aaron Rodgers seeing the pressure knows he's got to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Went to his talented young tight end. This is just a simple flat route kind of an outlet route had a vertical down the field. You can see Jennings was open near the, but he didn't have time to get that kind of ball off. Big conversion for the young receiver out of Texas. All right now we're under 350 down to 345. The 49ers have two timeouts. And they'll hand it off to Ryan Grant who bounces off an entire pile of would be tacklers and that is a huge gain out to the 41 yard line. Well it's all about bringing down the clock now. 49ers all over it and then you're going to watch they collapse down typically once you get to this point they're going to collapse down over commit to it and Ryan Grant somehow keeping his balance bouncing out now that the defense had collapsed to the point of attack one of those odd plays that you see a breakout run by a very good back now has changed the complete this is now run run chew up this clock. And by how that changes the field position if the 49ers were or are to get the football back at all. Brandon Jackson picks up a yard. And now a timeout is called by the 49ers. So Mike Singletary willing his defense to come up with a couple of stops you can see defense he'll bring him over on the sideline we've seen him do that before at times in critical situations this season he brings everybody over you are the man who brought Mike Singletary back into football Brian Billick he uh, had stepped away from the game after announcing his retirement to raise his family and then all of a sudden the phone rings it's Brian Billick on one end and on the other end Mike Singletary coming back into football as your linebackers coach. Well you you have that conversation with Mike Singletary you look into his eyes and when he tells you he wants to commit to the profession that he wants to literally change his life and change his career path you just say absolutely what can I do to help. Well, he was so complimentary of you I, I know it's maybe putting you in a rather awkward position to talk about it but uh, as Jackson 
tries to get the first down. It depends on where they spot it. I mean, he's right there. He needed to get to the 49 yard line. And you can see he is right on that yard marker. They're going to bring out the chains. Well, in the great position they're in now with 232 on the clock, San Francisco has one timeout. They clearly were going to have to burn that, whether they get this play or not, whether it's spotted for a first down or not. Uh, you know what? If I'm this is going to sound funny, but if I'm Green Bay, I most hope that I don't get it here because now that's going to give me an opportunity. I'm going to run the ball. San Francisco is going to have to call a timeout. They don't get it. And, and this is as convoluted as that sounds. Again, if I can get it under two minutes and I have a first down or even even into a second down, that clock's going to play into my hands. Now you got to get the third down here, but this could actually work in Green Bay's favor. San Francisco is going to use a timeout after they run this play if they get the first and Mike Singletary is in a tough position. He must, must be challenging. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I wonder if Mike knows enough to challenge the spot and says, oh, no, no, give him the first down now because <laughs> that doesn't work to my benefit. I'm, I'm not quite sure what Mike wants to challenge here. San Francisco is challenging the ruling on the field. Now. When you have one timeout left. And if you lose this challenge that timeout is gone. Why are you challenging. Well the only thing I can think. And, and I will tell first off challenging on a spot like this. Unless he's challenging this the, the, yeah, again they're short OK. And if he's just trying to back them up a little bit I don't know that that's worth the challenge. I can't imagine Mike has played this out in the scenario that I'm suggesting that it might actually be in Green Bay's best interest to, to this not be a conversion. He must be hoping that they've got to move that back a little bit and make this a longer third down conversion. Well you got to take a look Brian it appears when you look at the replay did his knee or his elbow hit first if it knee hit first it's about a two yard differential or a yard and a half spread. And right here that knee yeah, hit it, before it did hit so this is going to go back it, it, the difference is subtle but obviously enough in a critical situation because Mike Singletary knows if they convert here he's then going to have to call the timeout they'll run a play bring down the two minute warning they're going to be able to suck off. Uh, at least half that time on the clock and make it very difficult for his offense with an abbreviated time and no time After outs. reviewing the play the ruling on the field stands San Francisco is charged with a third and final timeout. Got to be honest with you after looking at that replay I think Mike had a beef. Yeah I think the tough. knee came down before the elbow which would have been. Well, right around midfield. Yeah, that would have backed it up at least a good yard. So now no timeouts left. And as it has turned out, it's played right into the hands of the Packer. If they can convert here with no timeouts, they'll bring this down the two minute warning on a first down call, and this game can be over. That extra shove in the back by Quinn Johnson. And is the ball loose? 49ers are saying the football is loose at the bottom of that pile. First down for Green Bay. A 49er came up with a ball. Scott McKillop, the rookie out of Pitt, had it at the bottom of the pile, but not much argument from Mike Singletary. This is just we're going to mash harder than you can mash a little help from behind. I'm going to push and shove here and. Well this takes us to the two minute warning. 30 24 Green Bay. Well with two minutes to go trailing by six and no more timeouts. Yeah that's your, every coach in the, in the league's got a that got a clock uh, management on his sheet that says no timeouts two minute 
that this should not go back into the 49ers hands unless somehow there's a penalty or something that stops the clock arbitrarily. So clearly Green Bay should have to do this two more times possibly the fourth time with no time left and that will be it. Mark McCarthy's got to be very pleased with what he's seen by it. not not some of the things defensively in the 49ers ability to come back but the balance he's seen out of his offense I guarantee he's thinking about that Thursday night game Thursday game on with the uh, Detroit Lions our game today produced by Bob Stenner directed by Rich Dewey our associate director Charles McDonald our broadcast associate Bill Cullen our technical producer Bob Muller and up here in the booth we thank Scott Snyder Tom Barbary and our entire Fox crew. The executive producers at Fox Sports are Ed Gorn and David Hill. So the 49ers will slip to four and six. The Packers go to six and four. And I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, you know, barring a complete collapse by Minnesota, right. Green Bay's only chance of getting into the postseason is as a wild card team. So they're in a new division. They're no longer in the NFC North. They're in the NFC playoff division. Yes. Which really makes it exciting going down the way competing with the likes of New York who we can see although they're still in the battle obviously for the NFC East Atlanta. I mean all, all, all the way to Philly all the way down the line. It, it makes it really is. It's a realignment of the divisions now. So going back to that 2005 draft those quarterbacks one chosen number one Alex Smith the other of course Aaron Rodgers who grew up in Chico California had to wait and wait and wait until the 24th pick and Rodgers against the team he grew up rooting for comes away with a 30 to 24 win Rodgers throwing for three hundred and forty four yards still lots more to come including the new BCS standings which we'll have for you here in a moment. Family guys.